بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ رب ذبنی علماء صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمدللہ رب العالمین کائنیمیٹکس ان دس لیکچر آئی ویل ڈسکس دی امپورٹنٹ کانسپٹس آف کائنیمیٹکس این امپورٹنٹ ایڈوائز بی کائن اینڈ بی ہمبل کائنیمیٹکس نمبر ون کانسٹنٹ ایکسلوریشن فار کانسٹنٹ ایکسلوریشن وی یوز اکویژن آف موشن دس از اکویژن نمبر ون وی از ایکول ٹو یو پلس اے ٹی دس از دی اکویژن نمبر ٹو ایس از ایکول ٹو یو ٹی پلس ہاف اے ٹی اسکوئر ویئر یو مینس انیشیل ویلاسٹی دس از دی تھرڈ اکویژن ایس از ایکول ٹو وی ٹی مائنس ہاف اے ٹی اسکوئر اینڈ دس وی مینس فائنل ویلاسٹی سو وین وی یوز انیشیل ویلاسٹی دین وی ہیو پازیٹیو سائن ہیئر وین وی ہیو فائنل ویلاسٹی ہیئر دین وی ہیو نیگیٹو سائن ہیئر سو بوتھ دی کویژنز آر سیم سو آلموسٹ سیم فار انیشیل ویلاسٹی یوز پلس سائن فار فائنل ویلاسٹی یوز نیگیٹو سائن دس از دی اکویژن نمبر فور ٹو اے ایس وی اسکوئر مائنس یو اسکوئر اینڈ دس از دی اکویژن نمبر فائیو ایس از ایکول ٹو وی پلس یو اپان ٹو ان ٹو ٹی When V is constant, then we can replace this by V dash. When V is equal to U, then U is V dash. And V dash means uh, V plus U upon 2. So when we have constant speed or velocity or average velocity, then we use this equation. For vertical motion, we replace A by G in all these equations. So for vertical motion replace A by G. For vertically upward motion take the value of G minus 10 and for vertically downward motion take the value of G plus 10 in M1. Time for maximum height. We can get the time uh, of the particle to reach its maximum height with the help of this equation. At maximum height velocity is 0. So when we will substitute 0 here and g minus 10 here, we will get this equation. So we use this equation to get time for the particle to reach its maximum height. If u is 7, then time of the particle to reach its maximum height will be 0.7 according to this equation. This is here. This is the shortest way to get the time of particle to reach its maximum height. Time of flight. Time of flight means this total time. So for time of flight, we first find this time. Time to reach its maximum height. And then we double this time for the time of flight. So if this time is 0.7, this will also be 0.7. Therefore, the total time will be 2 into 0.7, which is 1.4. Well, for vertically upward motion, we use this equation. And we got this equation with the help of this equation. Ut plus half gt square. So for vertically upward motion, we replace g by minus 10. So when we simplify this, we get this thing. S is equal to ut minus 5t square. And for vertically downward motion, we use this equation. S is equal to ut plus 5t square because for vertically downward we take the value of g plus 10 and for vertically upward we take the value of g minus 10 and when we substitute this minus 10 here we get this equation and when we substitute this here we get this equation. These equations uh, we use to make the calculations simple and fast. This is one of the most important concept of kinematics. Time difference. If the second particle is projected 5 seconds later than the first particle, then when particles meet, then the time of second particle will be t minus 5. Let's understand this concept with, uh, with the help of this example. 
particle P is projected at t seconds. And let's suppose at this point the time of particle P is 12 seconds. Particle Q is projected 5 seconds later than particle P. So at this point the time for this particle will be 12 minus 5 because this particle is projected 5 seconds later than this particle. So at, uh, at the point where both particles meet if the time of first particle is 12 seconds then the time for second particle should be 12 minus 5 seconds and you can easily form the equation for the time of second particle time of second particle is t minus time difference so just remember this equation time of second particle is time of first minus difference between the times of both the particles in this case it should be minus 5 and time of first particle is denoted by t so you can write this equation as time of second is t minus 5 M must remember this equation let's suppose if this particle is projected t seconds later then this equation will become t minus capital T because this is the time difference Number two, kinematics of variable acceleration. For variable acceleration, we cannot use equations of motion. We use calculus. So when we differentiate displacement, then we get velocity. And when we differentiate velocity, we get acceleration. So just remember this, S, V, A. This is differentiation. And the reverse of this is integration. When we integrate A, we get V. When we integrate V, we get S. So, A, V, S is through integration and we get S, V, A through differentiation. For maximum or minimum or constant velocity, if we need maximum velocity or minimum velocity or constant velocity, then we have to put a0 into equation of acceleration to get the value of t. So use acceleration 0 for the value of t. Once you get the value of t then substitute this into equation of velocity to get these velocities. For maximum displacement that means u-turn the particle will be at instantaneously rest. So for maximum displacement, use V0. And for change in direction and for instantaneous rest, for these three things, maximum displacement or change in direction or instantaneous at rest, for all these things, use V0. Because when particle is at maximum displacement, its velocity is 0. When particle changes its direction, its velocity is again zero. And instantaneous rest means velocity zero. This is the point where the, dis the displacement of particle is maximum. And this is the change of direction and this is the instantaneous rest. So always use V zero for the value of T. Get the value of T and then substitute T into equation of displacement. What if we need displacement between two points? To get the displacement between two points, use integration if you have the equation of velocity. So if you need this displacement, then use uh, lower limit here T A time at A time at B V D T. This will give you max, I mean displacement or distance between two points. Next, number four, distance in the third second. Third second means between T2 and T3. For that, use this equation. Time 2, upper limit time is 3 and V T T. You can also write this as S3 minus S2. So whenever you need distance in the third second, then uh, take these values of time as the lower and upper limit and integrate V. If you need time in the fifth second, 
then use this 4 and 5th VDD and so on. When the particle is again at its starting point, this is the starting point O. So when the particle is again at O, then its displacement is 0. So use S is equal to 0. Number 6. Well, time is always defined in the question. For example, if the question says the particle passes A when T uh, at t seconds passes a you can say this t is the time after leaving a or t is the time when particle passes a after leaving a passes a they both means at a t is zero whenever you read the question then you will find this thing in the question time is always defined like they would say t is the time where particle passes a so at a t is zero distance between two points if you need distance between two points then you can simply integrate velocity at these two values of t time at a time at b and v dt total distance in the first four seconds for that you need to use uh, this box I mean you have to take values of time in the box and you have to put these values into this equation of displacement the given equation of displacement and get the displacements so whenever you need total distance in the first four seconds and always use box and then after completing this box then take the difference of the consecutive values of s this difference, this difference, this difference, and this difference. When you will take differences of consecutive values of s, then you will get total distance. 2 minus minus 3 makes 5. Minus 3 minus 6 makes 3. 8 minus minus 6 makes 14. 8 minus 3 makes 5. Difference means larger minus a smaller this is the formula of difference so just take the consecutive differences and then add these differences to get the total distance therefore total distance in the first four seconds is 27 meters and average velocity average velocity is very simple just substitute this into this equation total distance divided by total time this will give you average velocity like 27 upon 4 6 whole 3 upon 4 I guess well use equations of motion for constant acceleration and use calculus for variable acceleration always remember for constant acceleration use equations of motion and for variable acceleration use calculus this is all i hope this lecture will help you to understand the basic concepts of kinematics i will discuss the solutions of important questions in my next lecture of both constant acceleration and variable acceleration and important advice we must be good to others good luck to everyone allah hafiz